What up, world? This is Charles Enoch. Now, I know you guys are thinking, what is this fool talking about when you clicked on the video? But before you crucify me, let me explain what I'm talking about. First thing that we want to understand is the definition of inflation. So that's when the value of your dollar goes down. So 20 years ago, $20 could probably buy you a cartload of groceries. Now $20 can barely buy you a loaf of bread. So every year, the average inflation is about 2 to 3%. So when you have money in your savings account, inflation is going to hit it. So you're actually losing money every year that you save money. So for example, let's say that you have $1,000 in your savings account for the year. Next year, it's only going to be worth $980 because inflation hits it. Now people are probably going to say, hey, I got one of those high interest savings accounts like the Alley accounts that give you 2 or 3% uh, interest when you put into it. Now, one thing that you do want to keep in mind, every year Uncle Sam is going to send you a 1099 and they're going to take some of that money. So you're still losing money. Now, I know this doesn't seem like that's a lot that you're losing, but let's put an even better example. Let's say Warren Buffett, he puts $1 billion in a savings account and lets it sit there. When inflation hits it, that 2%, he's going to lose about $20 million. That's a lot of money. Now the rich, they don't like losing money. So what do they do? They don't save their money, they invest their money. So Warren Buffett, he puts his money in the stock market. It's gonna give him an average of maybe eight to 12% uh, growth on his money. So he beats inflation every year and adds onto his money. So his money is making more money while your money is losing money. So you never want to save, you always want to invest your money. So this raises the question, why are we so conditioned to save money from a young age? So the reason why we're so conditioned to save money from a young age, because the banks profit off of this. So this is what the banks do. You put your money in a savings account. The banks, they have the right to loan your money to other people while they loan the money out, they're charging them interest. Now, you do get a little bit of money from the bank for them using your money. It's that 0.01% interest or whatever it is to put it in the savings account. But that's pennies on what they're making off of you. So they even entice you guys um, to put money into their savings account. They'll have like some promotional ad of, hey, put $10,000 in the savings account, leave it in there for a year, and we'll give you $500. Now, this $500, again, is pennies on what they're going to make off of loaning your money to others. So that's the main reason why they preach to you to put your money in a savings account and save it. So what about the financial advisors? So the financial advisors, remember, they do work for the banks or they, they get trained by the bank's concepts. So the concepts that they're telling you, it's still to benefit the bank. So when they say, hey, you need an emergency fund of like six months worth of savings, this is still to profit the bank. Now, the financial advisors may not understand uh, the concepts that the banks are giving them is to benefit the bank. And they may kind of trick them to be like, this is beneficial to them. But remember, the banks want to profit. So just be wary of. You know, some of the advice of the financial advisors. Again, I am not a financial advisor. This is just for educational use. But I do want you guys to educate yourself um, in regards to seeking out financial advisors because they sometimes they don't understand the big picture. Now, I know you guys are wondering, all right, if you don't want me to save money, then what do you want me to do? Now, I want you guys to invest your money. Now, you're going to say, how do you want me to invest my money? The best way to invest your money is to actually pay off your debt. Now, I know that majority of my audience, they're going to have some form of debt, either credit card, student loans, car loans, mortgage, etc. So you want to focus the money, your cash flow. So the income that you get uh, minus the expenses, the leftover money, your cash flow, you want to put that into your debt. Now, what you're going to do here while you're doing that, you're going to use the bank's money as an emergency fund so you don't need to save for an emergency fund. Now, how do you use the bank's money? Easy. 
Um, you apply for credit cards, lines of credit. This is free money that the bank is giving you, that they're loaning out to you. Remember, you loan them money by putting money into their savings account and then they use it to make more money. We're going to be using that same concept. They're going to be lending us money, credit cards, line of credit, and we're just going to hold that and we're going to keep that as our emergency fund while we invest our own money. Now, this concept does sound tricky. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a real life example on a whiteboard. So give me a few minutes. I'm going to put the whiteboard up and we'll get down to business. All right. So we got Velocity Victor. And he's ready to use these uh, velocity banking concepts to wipe his debt clean. So we're going to get straight into business here. So we got Victor. His income is $2,000. Expenses are $1,000 per month. And his cash flow is $200. So the income minus the expenses is going to equal your cash flow. Now, Victor, he's trying to get rid of his, his payday loan of $1,000. And the minimum per month that he needs to put on there is $100. And to make things easy, um, the minimum, all the minimum is applied to interest. Um, so Victor's like, Charles, you know, what, what, what do I need to do here? Um, so I tell Victor, you need to go to the bank. Victor's on it. January 2nd, Victor's at the bank and he asks for a line of credit. The bank awards Victor two thousand dollars for a line of credit so victor's like charles you know what do i do what do i start doing here so the first thing that victor's going to do is use his line of credit to pay off his loan so he's going to use one thousand dollars from the line of credit to pay off the loan now when we do that listen up when we do that here since the loan was a hundred per month, what this does when the loan is deleted here, when it's paid off, it reduces our expenses by one hundred dollars. So our expenses go from eight hundred or eighteen hundred to seventeen hundred, thus increasing our cash flow from two hundred to three hundred dollars. Did y'all catch that? All right. So now what he's going to do here remember this is still january 2nd victor's going to get that income coming in so he's going to get two thousand dollars dropping in in the month of january what he's going to do here is use a thousand dollars from his income and put it into that line of credit to pay it off in full now when you pay it off in full it doesn't accrue any type of interest so he's going to use a thousand of his income put that into the line of credit now the other thousand that Victor's going to use, he's going to use that on his expenses. Remember, his expenses are seventeen hundred. So if we minus a thousand from seventeen hundred, we still have seven hundred left of expenses. So how is Victor going to pay off these expenses? Right there, he's going to pull out of his line of credit. So he's going to take seven hundred out of the line of credit that he just paid in the full, the two thousand dollars of the line of credit. We minus 700 from the 2000, it's going to give us 1300. So for the month of January, he's wiped out his debt and his line of credit is 1300. So what we're going to do, we're going to break it down even further for you guys here um, in regards to what all happened in the first month because there's a lot that happened here. I need y'all to understand this. So he takes $1,000. He takes this $1,000 out of his line of credit. He applies this to the loan, to his payday loan, and he pays that off. He's paying the loan off. What this does here, this adds $100 of cash flow, $100, so $200 to $300 is added. So our cash flow is $300 now. And this minus is our expenses from 1800 to 1700. So that was the first step that Victor did here. Now, the second step of what he did, the $2,000 of income, he used 1,000 of that 
to pay the line of credit back to full, back to $2,000. He paid it off in full, used a thousand of it. Now he has a thousand dollars left of his income and he's gonna apply that thousand dollars on his expenses. Remember his expenses are 1,700. So when you do the thousand minus the 17, you get 700 in those expenses. Now the last step of what he did Remember that, that $2,000 line of credit? We are gonna pull $700 out of the $2,000 line of credit to pay for our expenses for the month of January, which is gonna leave us at that 1,300, right there. So that's all that transpired in the month of January. So what are we gonna do next month? We doing the same thing. So that income drops in. So we're going to take that $2,000, we're going to put $700 on the $1,300 that we have. This pays the loan in full to $2,000 back again, right? And then we're going to use the rest of our income, $1,300, to pay for the expenses. Now, that will leave us with $400 left. What are we doing? We draw from our line of credit right here. So when we draw 400 to pay for that line of, uh, to pay for the expenses, we're drawing 400 out of the 2,000, it's gonna leave us with 1,600. See that $300 cash flow? This happens every month, $300 cash flow. Boom. Now what we doing next month? We doing that same thing again. It keeps on coming, baby. So. We're gonna take that $2,000 of income. Now we only need to put 400 on there because our line of credit is 1,600 to pay that off in full. We paying it off every month, paying it off every month. So takes our line of credit 2,000. Now we got 1,600 to work with on our income. We paying our expenses. So that leaves us with $100 left on the expenses. And we just gonna pull 100 out of the line of credit. Right there, 1900 Now, do y'all see this? In three months, we paid off the payday loan, and we almost have the line of credit back to $2,000. That's, that's about three and a half months to get it back to $2,000 right here. Now, what we doing here, I'm going to throw a real-life scenario on here. So let's say in the month of March, we still got our 1900 In the month of March, mercy happens. Let's say we got car trouble, tires blew up, something like that, you know. And tires gonna cost us $600. So what do we do? Remember, our emergency fund is our line of credit. We don't have no savings account. Our emergency fund is our line of credit. So we're gonna draw $600 from the 1900, we're gonna be down to 1300 for the month of March for our line of credit. But what do we do next month? You already know that income rolling in. That income rolling in. So what do we do? What do we do with the income? We're taking 700 of that $2,000 of income because we got 13 right here to pay it in full to 2,000. Right? All right. So then the rest that we have, the uh, 1300 of the rest of our income, we're gonna put it onto the expenses. Now, a line of credit, remember, is paid in full. So now we're gonna take the rest, the 400 left of the expenses, and we're gonna draw it out of that line of credit of 2000, which is gonna get us that 1600. And then next month, we're applying the same thing again putting that income, putting 400 on the 16, paid in full, whatever's left on the income, we putting it on the expenses, then the line of credit, we're gonna use $100 to get it back to that 1900. Do you see what we just did? In five months, we didn't pay it off the loan, we didn't took care of our emergency already. And it's only May. And Velocity Victor, he still got about six more months to go. So if Victor 
has another loan, guess what? He's going to invest in the loan by using his line of credit to pay off that $1,000 loan, which is going to increase his cash flow from three dollars to $400. And he's just going to be knocking debt all year, just knocking it off. Now, one thing to remember, when December hit and January roll around, what happens? Inflation. So that line of that two thousand dollar line of credit that that Victor got, it's only going to be worth nineteen sixty. Now, what can Victor do to combat that 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 inflation right there? He gonna call up the banks. He gonna give a bank a call. He gonna be like, hey, listen, you know, I've been using the line of credit, been paying it on and off, in full, every month, all month. Can I get a, a, a credit increase? You know what the bank's going to do? The banks, they love giving money. They're going to be like, hell yeah. We're going to give you an increase. We're going to increase you from $2,000 to $4,000. Now, Victor has an emergency fund, a line of credit, from $2,000 to $4,000. Remember, we don't have no savings account. We don't do those. So now, Victor, he's ready to roll in the, into the next year investing and knocking out more debt so again if you don't get these concepts please rewind take notes all right so i'm still here with you i'm glad that we we looked at velocity victor and the success that he was having in 2020 um but i do want to go over some common mistakes that people will be doing thinking that they're velocity banking or thinking that velocity banking is just so complicated. You can do it this way and it's the same result. So we got don't listen David over here that he don't want to study these concepts. He just want to do what he want to do and think it's going to be the same, but it's not. So a lot of people, when they look at velocity banking, they're going to do something of this nature. And I just want to show you guys on this whiteboard so you don't do it. So we got Don't Listen David. He didn't want to study. Um, same scenario. We got his income, 2000 expenses, 1800 cash flow, 200 Trying to pay off his payday loan of $1,000. Um, and he got, he got a line of credit. Now... What David's scared of is using his line of credit to pay off the loan because that's just another debt. So what does Don't Listen David do? He just uses his cash flow of $200 to pay off the loan. So remember last video, we paid it off in about three months, just a tad bit over three months. Let's do David's way. So... First month, he puts the extra cash flow of 200. That's eight. Next month, six, four, two, zero. How many months did that take? That took five months. Again, he used just his regular cash flow. He did not use the bank's line of credit to pay off the loan to increase his cash flow and pay the bank back. He didn't study. It was too complicated for him. He just used his regular cash flow and it took five months to pay off the debt. Please do not do this. And remember, we had a scenario where there was an emergency. Tires blew up, 600. So David ideally would not pay this in five months. He would use, it would take him three more months because he's only using the $200 cash flow. He's not using the velocity banking concept. So it would take him three more months to get the emergency paid from the line of credit and then he would pay that off. So we're looking about eight months to pay off the payday loan. Again, please don't be, don't listen David because it's not going to work. So if you need to rewind, study Velocity Victor, please do so. But do not, I repeat, do not be don't listen David. All right, so last example I want to show you guys is Saving Sam. So Saving Sam is about 
what 99% of us do, um, you know, what I've been doing for 20 plus years, what we pretty much have been taught by the banks, by the advisors, and everybody, basically, um, of what to do. So I'm just going to give you this example, and this is why people keep being in debt and, and all that, that stuff here. So, Saving Sam, by the book, he talks to his financial advisors, and you know they're giving him the scoop and everything of an emergency fund to put in your savings account of about $1,000 just in case something happens. You need to have $1,000 in your emergency fund at all times. So Saving Sam has the same scenario. We're going to still throw out the same scenario. You got an income of $2,000. Expenses $1,800. Got a cash flow of $200. Trying to pay off his payday loan of $1,000. Now, Saving Sam, he goes to the bank. He starts his savings account. Financial advisor says, hey, Sam, before you start for real getting at your debt, you need to have that emergency fund in your savings account of $1,000. So Saving Sam, like, you know what? That, that sounds like a plan. That's a good idea. So what does Saving Sam do? January, $200 cash flow, $200 in his savings account. Next month, $400 in his savings account. Next month, in March, $600 in his savings account. Now, we still going to use that same scenario of an emergency happens. Since Sam don't got no line of credit, he ain't using the bank's money. Sam, he got his emergency fund. He using his own money. So he didn't. He just didn't save $600. Now his account is wiped clean because he had an emergency. He ain't using nobody's money. He's using his own money. Silly. But, so he wiped out the $600. Now next month, he got to save. He got the $200, $400, $600, $800, $1,000. All right, now he's at, he's at month eight at $1,000. He finally got his $1,000 of savings, which his financial advisors told him just for emergencies. Now he can start chunking at his debt in September. So now he's chunking 800 of his cash flow, 200, 600, 400, 200. It's December. He almost got it paid off, but it ain't quite paid off. This is how what most people do. And let's think about this. We only threw one emergency for this whole year. Do you think that he's only gonna have one emergency? Probably not. He might have an emergency in July or something. Then he gotta build his savings account up. And the debt ain't never gonna get paid. It didn't even get paid this year. It's just a thousand dollars. Philosophy Victor, he knocked that out in three months. Please don't be saving Sam. Do you see why saving your money does not clear off your debt? Because if you would have cleared off the debt, cash flow would have been $300. Please don't just be using emergency funds of $1,000, six months, three months of emergency. For what? And remember, since Sam has that $1,000, that inflation hits it, he loses $20. How can he combat that? He ain't got no line of credit. He don't use a line of credit for his emergency fund. He just asked out $20. You see that? Please don't be saving Sam. That's what we're doing. This is what 99% of people do, and this is why you're losing. So I just wanted to throw all three of these examples for you so you can understand, get the basic 101s, because again, 2020, we about to be winning for real. I'm not playing. So stay tuned for next um, video that I'll be dropping. Remember, subscribe, like, share, educate others. You know, let's get it started. Financial literacy, invest in yourself.